Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know. So strange. Uh, when, I, when I was very young, I had crippling anxiety. Mm. Mm-hmm. Crippling. Like, I went to a therapy group for it when I was young. Like, I don't think I've ever really mm-hmm. talked about this, mm-hmm. but I, it was fucking ridiculous um, in, like, primary school years. Uh, yeah. Probably, like, grade... Second grade to seventh grade. Mm-hmm. Crippling anxiety. I could only be at home or at school, and if my parents left the house, I'd get anxious, but it, uh, well, not too bad, but I couldn't stay at friends' houses. All the primary school, I never went to friends' houses, I never went to sleepovers because I was too anxious okay. yeah. the whole time. Um, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Um, I was, but no, but there was like, it was like this weird secret, and when you're a kid, you don't, you think you're different. Like, I thought, no one else feels like this. I'm the only one that thinks this. I'm, I'm a freak. There's something wrong with me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I would just like, cri- like <clears throat> I'd just be crying. I tried to make myself sick, um, so I didn't have to go to school camp. Like I was trying okay. to make myself throw up. Mm. Like it was crippling. I did everything I could to avoid. I had to lie to my friends why I couldn't stay over at houses. I um, just made up stories, and my parents didn't get it because that like it was before anxiety was talked about a thing so like it was just like an issue that only i had i never Mm -hmm. accepted it as a thing like i just thought there was something wrong with me and i had to figure it out um and my parents put me in this like therapy group um thing to try to discuss stuff but that didn't help at all um it was just and it was like this weird secret because uh i was school captain in primary school I mm. went up in front of the whole school and did speeches. No problem. I fucking love public speaking. Like, to think that I had anxiety to people would be bizarre. I was the most confident person. I was captain of every sports team I was in. I was, yeah, school captain, always doing speeches in front of the school. Like, you'd have no idea, mm. right? But then I had this mm. crippling anxiety on the side that I couldn't go to a friend's house for his birthday I had to make up, make up lies. I'd yeah. be in yeah. tears inconsolable trying to make myself throw up so I didn't have to go to camp like I'll never forget that in the shower trying to make myself vomit and my dad my my parents just going um, I've never ever talked about this Um, I don't even talk I don't think on this podcast I don't think think I've ever even talked to really my friends about this this is like but it's it's not a big deal now because I'm so different like I used to freak out thinking what if I couldn't um, what if I'll be like this forever what if I'll um what if I'll be 18 and I won't be able to hang out with friends? What if I'll be 20 and I won't be able to move out of home? Like, oh, that's what I used to mm. fear. That was my biggest fear, which grew worse and worse because I thought it was only me. No one else is like this and I'm going to be like this forever, like a disease. Um, whereas, like, I've traveled the world by myself, you know, lived yeah. on my own for years. Like, it's, you know, obviously I'm a completely different person. Um, now I'm very fucking confident i uh, there's nothing i'm i have zero fear when it comes to that at all but it's it's i definitely like i definitely understand crippling anxiety like i really mm. truly understand what you mean when you when you say what crippling anxiety is i know what you're talking about it's yeah. fucking it's crippling. a weird one it's been because... a long time since i felt it mm-hmm. and there's and there's always that feeling that comes up but i i, I learned and i and i will always say like i i have friends now um, that have children and one of them's young under 10 and they're saying that she has anxiety and they're just telling her she has anxiety and she sees a therapist and I just said she's fucking she's a child she doesn't have anxiety like you d- don't tell her like that like it's normal mm-hmm. the best thing for me I thought with my anxiety was that I literally beat anxiety for me I'll never ha- I'll, I will never have it again because I, I learnt how to overcome it because I never normalized it to myself. Mm-hmm. I never yeah. said, oh, it's just anxiety. That's a thing people have. I was like, no, there's something wrong with me and I need to fix it. And I, and I, and I dealt with it. Yeah. It took fucking years and years and years. And it was, you know, when I tried to make myself throw up uh, before school camp, my dad and mum just got to me, we know that you're faking it. We know you're trying to do it. You have to go. You have no choice. Jesus. Like, my parents weren't, like, they were sympathetic, but they weren't. They were like, you need to, they were just like, you need to get over it. You have to get over it. Because they didn't think of it like anxiety. I've talked to them about it now as an adult. Mm -hmm. And we were all, we all agreed one day. We're like, that was anxiety. Holy shit. Like, that's what it was. We didn't really know that at the time, right? Like, that wasn't a thing. Um, Mm. Whereas, 
my my parents just go, we know you're faking it. We know you, you just made yourself throw up. You, you're going to camp. You have to go. Yeah. You don't yeah. have a choice. I think and that's good though, because if you have, it was, it was, it was good. Like, oh, it's all right. You've just got anxiety. That's just how you are. Like, you're never. I, would, get I literally better. would. I, who, who, would I who would I be now? Who would I be now? If yeah. my parents um, enabled it, you know, who would I be yeah. now if I wasn't forced to deal with it and mm-hmm. forced into situations? Um, I got to grade eight in my first year of high school, and we had a school camp. Um, second week of school because it's like a getting to know you you're everyone's new to the school pretty much like the, my school was prepped to grade 12 in high school but i only went there in high school um mm. so half but half the kids only only started then so half the people knew each other the other half are new they want everyone to integrate so they do this like camp for a week and mm. again i tried to make myself sick before it parents forced me to go and i went and i was fine i couldn't believe it like I went there and it was, this school, this school was amazing. My high school, I always say like saved my life. It changed my life. Um, mm. The It was a private school, private Christian college. And it was a beautiful school with a beautiful culture to it. The teachers were so amazing. All the fucking students were so amazing. Like I, I went to three public schools for primary school. I dealt with fucking bullies. I dealt with all that shit, fights, all that shit for seven, eight years. So I get, get to the school and I'm a, the first day I'm struggling a little bit, a bit quiet. But then I have all these, like, literally the best people I've ever met that just have you back and they don't even know you. I was like, wow, these people are really mm. nice. All the teachers were the same. And then I was just like, you know, I'm actually really comfortable here. And then I dealt with this whole week at camp and I didn't have any anxiety the whole time because I was just felt comfortable in this situation. They made me feel so comfortable. And then I'm like, wow, this is really cool. And then all of a sudden I started going to friends' houses and then I started sleeping over friends' houses and by, like... Six months into grade eight, I literally had no anxiety anymore, and um, I probably had three glimpses of it again, where you like start freaking out. When I was in LA last year, I felt the this like the pit of my stomach, that feeling, yeah. that's like the preemptiveness of that crippling anxiety. And yeah. I was in LA, and I got in there, and I I um, spent the first day there. I was at my Airbnb, and I was just thinking, um, "Fuck, I'm all alone in LA." I don't know anyone. For, you know, you have that, that starts going on your head. Yeah. I literally know no one yeah. anywhere within thousands of miles of me. Um, the next person that I know is in New York and then the UK after that. I, and I just was like, in my head, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get to the UK because then I'm like with friends and it'll be good. But it mm-hmm. was just for like five minutes I felt that feeling come up again. But I was able to just literally push it down and be like, shut the fuck up, Tyler. You're the fucking man. Like, what are you talking about? You can do anything. You can literally yeah. do anything. And then yeah. you, you just... It's when you sit alone and you have, you're alone with those thoughts that it can creep up on you. Um, but when you're just active and doing stuff, it, it's just not there. But yeah, mm-hmm. that's a weird tangent I went on. I've it's never talked weird. about that. It's but, just a weird one. It's a weird one. But I think a lot of people that listen to this can probably relate to it as well. And it probably helps to yeah, hear other so. people that, that have experienced it and, have, and are able to deal with it. Um, so, you know... Um, Hopefully that's, you know, reliable to some people, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, my lesson to it is, is I truly believe um, anxiety and having anxiety is normal. Everyone gets it. I also truly believe anyone can beat it. It's not a fucking lifetime sentence if you've got crippling anxiety. And I'm not talking because everyone gets anxiety. Mm -hmm. Some people have crippling anxiety. I also truly believe I had an extreme case of crippling anxiety for years, but it's not Mm -hmm. a lifetime fucking sentence. I am probably the most confident person I actually know. I have no problem saying that. I have mm-hmm. too much. I have fucking bucket loads to share. Any, you guys can have it. Take it. <laughs> oh, but I did. I had crippling anxiety to the point I was trying to make myself throw up so I didn't have to go to a camp. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't think I've ever done that. You know, like no. I, it was like every day for years. I thought there's something wrong with me. I used to say I wish I was Harlan, my, my brother, because he didn't have it. I wish I was someone else. I used yeah. to think that. Mm, but yeah, but at the same that. time, being the kid at school, that school captain and captain of every sports team he's in, and no one would mm-hmm. know. And that was part of it as well. Part of the anxiety was like, no one knows. It's like a secret I had to keep from everyone um, to not be like a freak. Mm. You know? But you can beat it. Yeah. You can fucking beat it. You've just got to face it. You can't enable yourself. You can't push yourself down put yourself out there um, and you will find ways seek the uncomfortable and you will become comfortable yeah I was about to say the exact same thing mm. like if, if if you know a situation makes you uncomfortable 
go for it because the more yeah. the more you feel uncomfortable in the long run the less you will when doing it again yeah 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 exactly that's how it is and um, it is difficult you just gotta it, push yourself it could be yeah it could be so difficult to do that though because your brain mm. is telling you no this can't happen like this is something yeah. that can't actually happen in this in this fucking realm of existence yeah, you can't do it because it's dangerous it's almost like this fight or flight you get like yeah, it is you like your brain is telling you don't do that because it's dangerous like yeah. it's almost like the same reaction you get to like going to like jump off a building or something yeah it like is. it's this feeling of like no you can't do that like you physically can't bring yourself to do that yeah and so yeah you just it. gotta sometimes just gotta try and push through that and sometimes i think it helps if you have other people around to push you as well yeah because well maybe not even to push you necessarily but like if not i'm on my own you. doing something i could like if i'm just by myself i could very easily go to do something feel that anxiety and not do it but yeah. if I'm with somebody else, I can't do that because I'm going to look like a fucking retard. Yeah, like, exactly. I've got to do it. I've got to push myself and do it. And that helps if you're doing things with other people because yeah. you're like, well, I can't do this in front of this person. They'll be like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like, what are you doing? That's a completely normal thing. Why are you, like, like scared? Like, what's going on? So, yeah. like, if you're with someone else, you're like, no, okay, now I have to do it. Like, I physically have to do it. I can't back out. Um, and that helps you then get used to it so that, you know, if you feel that on your own you are able to push yourself and do it because you know you've done it like a million times before. Um, it's weird. It's a fucking weird one because it is completely irrational. Yeah, um, it is completely irrational. And you but... know it's irrational, but yeah. you can't. Like, it's just this fucking mental block uh, that you just yeah. have to keep trying to push past. Sometimes you start with smaller things, build your way up, uh, and eventually be able to, you know... I mean, I'm not fucking crippled by it anymore. No. no. It can be debilitating, though. It can, it really can be. It can limit a lot of people as well. Like there's for a time, thing. though, right? Like it limits you for a time. It limited me for a long time. If you let it, it really yeah, did. You... It really did limit me, and and it got worse before it got better. It, it, it. When I first started having it, I was in the second grade. I was probably eight years old, but I could still go to friends' houses at that point. I could still go to a sleepover here and there, but it like over the years it got increasingly worse. Hmm. Um, and I couldn't tell you why. There was nothing really that triggered it that had any reason to get worse it just got worse i suppose it's because it almost like chips away at you like, it, it does so it does and the fear of like, it the fear of it grows as well yeah. of, of mm -hmm. and then you don't want to deal with it um but i had um parents that uh didn't enable me i had parents that it, you know it was i hated it that they did it to me at the time but i'm grateful now yeah. um they didn't allow mm -hmm. me um to be crippled by it they didn't allow me to get go in my shell they forced it um it's like a fucking curse and they just like, you know, fought against it for me in some ways by forcing yeah. me to deal with it. And, um, then, um, you know, my, the, my high school I went to also, I give full credit to helping me out, you know, change my life, save my life in that way. But I also wouldn't be who I was if I didn't deal with that growing up as well, because now I seeking the uncomfortable to become comfortable is how I literally live my life I want to do things that are super fucking hard now I joined the military because mm. I was like that looks so fucking hard and scares the shit out of me that's yeah. why I want to do it mm. I love martial arts and want to fight because I'm like that's fucking terrifying that's that's intense that's hard I want to achieve that I like setting myself hard goals because I like to overcome it that feeling of overcoming something difficult is amazing and I don't think I'd be that way if I didn't overcome a crippling anxiety as a child. 